Pretty cool stuff. Crazy. What a what a stalemate. It's always it always seems to be like that with at, at least in this qualifier with the the Chinese region. It's like there's just these these like stalemate these like mental stalemates where they're playing on just high grounds, doing the same thing over and over again. Nothing really happens, and then boom, everything explodes at one moment. It just all builds up and then it explodes. You know. China Dota. I, I mean, I, I feel like it's it's sort of one of the things that particularly happens a lot. I mean, it would happen even late into the patch, but particularly early in a patch, you would see it also. And it's why I think they, you know, have banned out the Medusa in the first phase. It's wow. a hero that just it does that Jesus and Christ, wins. Look at these first phase bans. I know. <laughs> Kunkka, PA, Medusa, Sand King, Magnus, like even Razor. Like all of these are just targeted China Dota bans. True enough. Where's the brew? Where's the lich? Where's the grimstroke? Not picked. <laughs> Terribly first care. phase picked. They don't care. What is this, man? God damn. <laughs> How are we supposed to do any analysis? <laughs> I, I mean, I think it speaks to a couple of things. One, Team Master think that Ten the mid player three. for eHome is a strong enough Kunkka that you just don't want to have to deal Five with it. I can understand that. I think that a lot of times what it comes down to in these, you know, sort of, Radiant team I, I guess in these matches is you want to make people uncomfortable, right? Like there, there's sometimes where a hero and a player just fit together so good that like you can play around that style. Even if it's not the perfect style, it's their style. And you want to take them out of their comfort yeah. zone. Just like how many times have these guys probably played around his Konko? Yeah. Probably so many times. Sure. Uh, and then also, it's on a new patch. So how many times have they played around the Kunkka on a new patch? It, more importantly, how many times have they, have they not played around on the, the new patch? Mm -hmm. Maybe not Maybe not so much. So just... Force yeah, them get, to beat you with something else. Get it out. Yeah, get it out. Medusa too. I mean, all of these picks are just yeah. like, all right, you, you know, you think, he, you think you can beat us? You think you can play all these fancy heroes? How about, how about you play some Dota without them? Let's see, I mean, let's see how you do. It's very appropriate that Burning's team is built around just one person farming all game long. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It's true. Although the, the the four protect one has evolved, it's like yeah. the one the one uh, doesn't just farm jungle. The one is also pressuring and like choosing when to Ten show up the fights. It's almost like everybody plays. Is Dusa doing that? Four though? protect one. Uh, maybe not so much Dusa. Yeah. Maybe yeah. not so much Dusa. Like the other the other you know traditional carries in like the previous patch, like Terrorblade, Phantom Lancer. You try to get some pressure in on right. the lanes uh, while while doing. You know the the one things, which is just hitting creeps as fast as you can. Um, and we do have a lot of the main cores taken out, so we might see an early pickup by one of them since they already know who the offlaners are, Axe and Centaur, respectively. Huh. So let's see. I, what, what's 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 left for the offlane other than Baru? Because of course that's not going to get picked. Well, they already have the offlaners, probably, right? You just oh, Centaur Axe, right? What am I talking about? What's left for supports? We have we we need we need two supports from eHome. Uh, there's team Lich, Grim Rubik, stroke. surprisingly still available. Grimstroke, surprisingly mm. still available. That support's getting like second phase now. It, I think that we should reiterate real quickly again how important this match is for both of these teams. You've got Team Master versus Ehome, the consensus battling for third spot in this major qualifiers. And if they lose this game, they have to immediately go in and play a best of three against LGD, the best team in China, for their chance to get into the majors. So you want to yeah. make it through with this game. You don't want to have to play a whole nother best of three against LGD of all teams. Yeah, Jesus, especially because LGD has been watching and preparing yeah. with these uh, with these games. Yeah, it's, it's a gauntlet for sure. All right, let's see. Rubik. Rubik is most certainly the pick, right? Come on, it's first phase pick every other region, including this one. Is it any other reason that you wouldn't want to take it? Uh, maybe because you want a phoenix. <laughs> I don't know. I don't okay, know. That's I don't fair. Know. Phoenix. You uh, don't like stuns, or? <laughs> uh, well, you don't need stuns when you have a big egg, man. I got big eggs. Let's see. Uh, <laughs> I don't know where I'm going with that. Uh, Morphling. So they pick the fire. So you pick some water to put the fire out. High level. It's pretty legit. Yeah, Thank sick. you. <laughs> this is what happens when God's <laughs> leaves. <laughs> <laughs> it's all oh, good. <laughs> we the Morphling hasn't been super successful, but against the Terrorblade, it's uh, definitely more of a hero. That's when we would see it be picked in the previous Five patch. It's kind of the same thing as Terrorblade because you just morph into him, steal his three ultimates that he has, and sure you don't get the Sunder, but maybe Sunder is not that great when it doesn't pierce BKB and it costs mana now. Yeah. So it's just it's just yeah, probably better against Terrorblade than it ever was.
And they banned out the Tinker by Ehome, so some of the strats involved, like, bursting that Morphling during Disables are less likely to occur. Yeah. The Void is out of the pool also by Ehome. Um, yeah, I, I feel like Team Master have really taken advantage not just of their own bans, but also the bans that Ehome have thrown out there. Now, yeah, agreed. What, what's your play? Like The Elder Titan ban was so good. That completely was. destroys uh, Morphling, but... I think I think Rubik is good. You steal the stat steal. You steal like you steal the the, the, the stat morph on Morphling. You just run around two thousand HP on, on Rubik. No bracers needed. Uh, you can steal all of the stuns from Shadow Shaman. Grimstroke's abilities are very strong to steal. You can instantly interrupt the axe blink initiation. But I don't feel like this draft is going to be predictable at all. I don't think I don't think any of the drafts today are going to be predictable at all. There is too much on the line that they are going to have very specific strats. Then again, because I said that, that, that my pick Rubik. We'll I, I mean, that's the thing, though, is that oftentimes what you end up getting into in these China qualifiers is that people stick what their comfort zone is because they feel like, okay, we want to at least, if we're going to lose, lose playing the strat that we know well. So sure. you sometimes see, Radiance like, I wouldn't be surprised if Ehome just take a puck Lion. at this point after taking the lion. So some good burst damage there. That's on the same level as Rubik in terms of stopping the instant initiation of Axe. Like, you can just instantly hex him yeah. and use the... F you can you know, use vision and instantly hex him, or you can just preempt, have your finger in a certain area, maybe use quick cast, something like that, and get axe uh, pretty pretty easily. But also, more importantly, you have this hero that can instantly blow up Morphling if he's ever on low HP, which is which is always like Lion is such a good counter to Morphling. It's you know, I I wouldn't mind seeing a mid Lion. People, people do it. Peop but then again, that's NA pubs, and people do a lot of things on, in NA pubs. But I'm thinking, like, you get a level 6 rotation into the Morphling's lane and just blow him up. Like, yeah. talk about sort of the ability to just shut down Although, one particular you know, hero. I do, f I do feel that with the items that you build Ten online and remaining. the timing that you get level 6, because Morphling is Five always at... There's no remaining. point where it's like, okay, Lion can't kill Morphling anymore. Right, that's you true. You know what I mean? That's it's true. like I feel like as a support, it probably yeah, does enough. I'm not, di I'm not disagreeing with the mid-Lion, because I've seen a lot of people do it, but... Uh, you know, people are having the same thought process, but I think I think yeah, like against a morphling, it's you should be fine as a support. Just running at support anyways. Yeah. So Maybe they need another four source of burst damage. So they need a mid. Uh, I mean, like D DK seems fine. Just some hero that um, functions against almost yeah, anything. Really then again, if you run the DK mid, you risk like allowing the morphling to have that free lane and just get a bunch Five of levels in the mid lane. He's a lot more of an issue when he's when he's ahead like that, especially against right. the terror blade. So. Let's see, carry wise. Well, what what uh, do we have left? No void. That's not in the pool. No PA. No razor. If he wasn't a terrible hero, I'm storm would be kind of cool. Yeah, I think he's uh, really bad against uh, against Aster. Yeah, it's good. Really good against a Morphling. It's good against. Yeah, like the, the problem is, it's like so many offensive items from them, like the hex and stuff like that. Can yeah, be tough. yeah. Like if you if you can Radiant get on one of these supports, it would. The sack. Oh. Hmm. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that didn't sound like a confident hmm. Uh, <laughs> that's that sounded like a thinking emoji. <laughs> I'm just I'm just wondering why, I guess. Push down towers a little bit with the terror blade, you you blow up the morphling if you're able to get them isolated. Sure. I mean, it's uh, just a little risky cuz they have like the response pick, so yeah. There's a lot Five that you could pick to just remaining. annihilate a Lashrak. Probably depends on comfort. I mean, I think Hoskar would be pretty good. Okay. Uh, I think I'm not <laughs> we're not gonna be able to predict this. <laughs> I mean Zeus Zeus is really good again. Oh it's banned. it's banned. Okay. Uh Tinker's banned, Zeus is banned. Sniper? I'm just gonna guess sniper because every time there's just a sniper last pick against these random lineups. Good against the Phoenix. Just go DK. That seems pretty fine too. You do need that tanky frontliner too. Somebody to start the fights actually and axe counter initiate. Oh. You were right. We weren't able to predict it. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. There's no point. <laughs> there's no point. I think after we see like the first six bands, there's no there's no way to predict this this draft. Yeah. Death Prophet, a hero that is has been very successful. Uh post patch she her win rate went up something like five percent. I think it's fair, though, because she was pretty uh, garbage tier for a long time. I'm not sure how it matches up against the Lashrac. I assume because they last picked it, it's probably a really good matchup. I do I, 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 I do feel like the Lashrac has the burst damage to kill to kill a DP, though. Yeah. That's the only thing. But with that with that slow steal, like or, or that movement speed steal that 
you have now on yeah. Death Prophet, maybe if you get a gank, like you can just keep running down the little shrack over and over and over again. That's one of the issues with this hero in the mid lane. Is he is paper squishy, man. This guy, this guy is like gonna die, and you know, all they need is the Shadow Shaman. They don't need, they don't need to do the two-man support rotation that we've seen so much in this tournament. I will say that I've been very impressed with the Ehome Position Four player. Uh, that was the name nicknamed God's Will at one point. I think that's what it was. I'm not sure if it still is, since I don't speak Chinese. Sorry, guys. Uh, and he feels like he's going to need to be the playmaker to me. And I think that he has the, the skill to make it happen. Um, run in there, kill off Morphling, because as much as it's we can talk about how good Death Prophet is, this is all about the Morphling. It is, yes. It is. It's a Lion 4, right? Yes. Okay. I, I like that. I like that. I like that a little better. I think that coincides with what you were saying about, like, him going mid on the line, just ramp him up a little bit quicker. Yeah. And uh, and we've seen how little farm Innocence gets on the, the Phoenix, too. Yes. <laughs> you you <laughs> definitely want your line in this game to have items. It's even strong against the Death Prophet. Like, this hero, her, like, the traditional counter to her is you just burst her down. Right. And it doesn't matter if you have that crazy ultimate that she has because it takes time to, to, to have an effect. You just burst her down and you win the fight, basically. So, yeah, Lion, very, very good this game. If he can get off to a good start, which we have seen him in previous games get off to some pretty nice starts, he will have total control of this game, basically. So All right. give a bit of a pause. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this guy's going to go into it. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to hop into the game now. Let's do it. Game at number three. Winner is going to the major. And, yes, we do have a pause, a disconnect. That's actually going to give me time to adjust one of my hotkeys. I don't remember which one it was. Oh, yeah. Can we, can we take a moment to just appreciate your, your hotkeys? Yeah, let's do it. Let's what do you see. think? Okay, so you have QWE, so, okay, you're pretty new to Dota, I, I would suppose. <laughs> and, you know, you could have 1, 2, 3, or 5. You could have Legacy Keys. Okay. Space. Cool. I, like that you, I like that you have space on your items. That's, yeah. uh, you know, a uh, hotkey that a lot of people don't utilize yeah. That's well a good enough. One. It is, you know, the largest key on your keyboard. And yeah. it's the, th the, th the great thing about the space key is it's one of the few buttons that mm. you're not an idiot for pressing with your thumb. Yeah. If you press, like, the Q key or something with your thumb... <laughs> Uninstall <laughs> League of Legends dot com slash play Jeez, slash that, sign up. There Thanks, you go. Kevin. That's the meme. Uh, so you got t, t for your. Uh, that's a little far over on the keyboard, you know. But I got to admit, I use. I do use the T as well. All right. Okay. Let's get. I'm out drinking here. tea right now. For example. Mm. <laughs> that was wonderful analysis, my man. Thank you. Thank you. I I, I appreciated this, that. This is what I do. Yeah, it's good stuff. Uh, I'm actually going to open this one back open, though, and take a look at some of these items. Anything that's unusual here? I feel like DP might be a Bracer hero. If I there think, was yeah, a yeah, yeah, sure, for sure. I think, uh, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> this sounds like I'm joking, but maybe even Noel Talisman, Bracer, Wraith Band. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that sounds all right, going for all three of those on that hero. She does a little bit of right clicks, so wants to survive the burst, needs uh, the magic resistance, but then again, maybe just three Noel Talismans. Ooh, five-man smoke coming out. Three-man smoke, four-man oh. smoke, sorry. He got there in the end. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a lot of numbers. We got double Stout Shield XXS looking for a kill here, but will not find it. E home. Where are they going to go next? But now they're on the high ground, man. This is oh, this, this is a nice is place to be. And now they're on Ooh, the high Death ground too. Gonna go back. She's going to go back. She's going to go back. No, she's not. She might go oh, back this God. way. That's so lucky. He has no idea that instant death would occur to him if he walks up this high ground. Axe is missing. Grimstroke is missing. They're all missing. Guys, where are they at? This is. Good call from them, though. Oh, they placed down a ward here, anticipating a different ward, and that was not there. Oh, what have you done? What have you done? And it looks like they might, on Ehome, get three bounty runes. The battle begins. We'll see if uh, if Terrorblade wants to take the walk over there or not. As soon as they see all these heroes, and they should tell Terrible oh. that they have them. Oh. Impale onto two. Hoof stomp to follow it up. The punch is coming through. Is it going to be enough damage, though, to take down XXS? The punches are there in first blood. Damn. On by that, was, the first that was pretty cool. Reasons. They had a chance to go on the Shaman, who's much easier to kill, but they actually chose to go on the Axe because they know that that's the core. Like, they want to kill the core, so they actually made the calculation that they can kill him despite being much tankier. I mean, he literally has two stout shields. So. Money changes hands. That's, uh, that was pretty cool. Impressive. M in most games, you just have everybody go on the Shaman because he's just a squishy support. It's a free first blood. Right. They're just trying to get everything that they can get, especially because it's a Centaur versus Axe. I think this heavily favors the Axe. Give the Centaur a little bit of help up here. And they're not deciding to switch up the lanes at all, and instead, Innocence is going to have his camp 
dewarded, it looks like. Is that right? Yeah, he got the deward on it. So we'll get the spawn now. Yeah, they need that pullback. Then again, Axe is not going to give a shit. He's just going to go cut the wave eventually. He's got the double stout. Yeah. Bottom lane, Terra Blade against Morphling with a Lion and Grimstroke in tow. Going to be uh, potentially contentious lane if you get yeah, Once again, battles. we have this carry, like aggro with the carry into carry lane. Do you like it? Uh, I mean, it seems like it's winning. I am not sure. I guess they didn't want to have the axe contest the, par the Terra Blade, but it looks like it actually would have been fine, though, because the axe went double stout, so he's looking to cut the wave, right? He's not contest he's not looking to contest the Terra Blade on the wave, so it's a little bit of a... I mean, he is getting farmed out here on Terra Blade, though, so I, gu I guess it's fine. Yeah. And then Lion going to take away a couple of those last sits every now and then as well. Well, Terra Blade fights with the neutrals for his own. Misses that one, but we'll be able to pick up another in a second. Uh, we can keep our eyes. Oh, misses that one too. Grimstroke? Punching? Okay, Fender's fine. Uh, mid lane. Looks like so far DP uh, a little bit ahead of the Leshrac, but only because the creep wave is under his tower. And so the Lesh will take a slight lead over Death Prophet. Uh, she gets an arcane rune. That makes things a lot easier. I played a game as Tinker the other day, and. Some guy went like three nulls against me, and I I tried to go the old Tinker build with just going one null. Mm -hmm. He annihilated me, and then I, I did a very similar matchup, Tinker versus some other like random mid hero, and I went nulls on Tinker, and it was so much easier. Really? These nulls actually matter so much. Like if you don't get the nulls, you're just gonna get completely outlasted in this lane, especially because if you're laning against a hero who does any sort of magic damage, it's going to be amplified. Right. By the nulls, and they give you more damage now. Radiance courier has been killed. What? That was that was Axe's that was Axe's ring of health. That's huge. That's so important for him cutting this wave. And this is just hit it as he walked by. God, it's three minutes now, so he could have just waited like a second oh, longer. Oh man, dude, that is that's that's really really bad for Axe. And I missed the kill too, but that Your doesn't matter in comparison to the ring of health no off the courier for the Axe. And yes. The I also, the, the, the ne Death Prophet's not going to be able to get any more items brought out to her, whereas Leshrac has a, a second, a second ult. Ult. Yeah, and he's going to have bottles him too. Oh. I, I like the fact that he's contesting this axe just because he knows that the axe can't get the Ring of Hell now. Yeah. So if he can take the axe's tangos away, then he's going to start getting lower and lower with these creeps. That's the thing. The timing is like you go for a tango plus a salve or two tangos double stout, and at a certain point you get the Ring of Health, but at that point you're maybe 70% HP, right? Like 80% yeah. HP. Uh, but without the Ring of Health, like he's just going to get lower and lower, potentially. He's doing a good job, though. Like Instead of going for two points in the nuke, he went for one point in the nuke, and he just has the max passive because he knows that he's going to need to kill the creep quite faster without that Ring of Health. Right. A lot of the time Axe would go two points in the nuke and just use that to dive and just... Abuse the fact that you have that regen. Kill the wave a little slower, but it's fine because you have the regen. But without the Ring of Health, like, he definitely needs it. So he has answers now, at least, which is nice. And now yeah. in the mid lane, nice uh, Death Prophet does not really have great answers. And with the bottle picked up and also having an illusion rune here, this is where the lane probably is going to be the, the biggest felt. Nice. Uh, that lack of a courier. As yeah. Is he going to start to dominate this lane a little bit more as he is well, about a wave ahead of the DP? Trading a lot of hits. They also do have the Phoenix nearby to possibly dive on her if things get a little bit testy. Yeah, if he can get a if he can get a lightning storm into stun, the Phoenix is able to probably come kill this DP. Well, courier responds, and with that, all that advantage is still lost up. So nothing really ends up mattering all that much. And in the meantime, Bobica coming to contest the Terra Blades farm as he's punching ancients and trying to bait Bobica into a bad position. Nowhere left to go. This is a dead shaman, and they give him the tip to boot. All right. Meanwhile, though, they lose their lion down bottom. The horrors of hell have nothing on I think we've me. seen a 100% correlation between uh, number of tips and winning games, so I would say that Ehome has this one firmly in the bag. Dyer's mm. top tower in the bag. Is under attack. He's not out of the bag, but in the bag. That's right. Uh, as far as net worth is concerned, it's still Axe that's leading the charge. Oh, this hero farms so quickly, especially if you go for this. Well, actually, the thing is, like, if you go for this four points and spin, yeah, you're going to kill the wave faster, but really there are only two camps that you can pull the wave to Someone before uh, the losing stone. the next wave. 
So that's why a lot of people go for two or three points in spin and then go for points in the nuke just because you don't actually have enough time to get to the other camps. So you're only farming two camps plus the... Although, with that being said, yeah, he's, he's still uh, killing those waves super, super quickly. Regeneration. He's actually running over to test the centaur. And centaur Faith Beyond has already finished off his. Takes off that, and oh People's no, Axe in some trouble. Saving the stun as well, at least for a moment, and the Stampede also XXS. Not going to be able to find the kill Axe on the Faith Beyond. Last track rotation bears fruit. I swear to God, every time you play this Axe Hero and you run over to try to contest the lane, you just regret it. I wish I just kept farming creeps. Oh, Bobaka going to go down with the Metamorphosis forced out. With that, they're going to try and farm up a little bit more. Trying to kill off this lion. They want to make him have a bad game, but I don't know if it's going to end up happening as they rotate a couple more in. And Aster still looking for something good to go their way. They have the DP level 6. Might decide to use it here. You know, I kind of get why people are running the carry in the offlane now a little bit. Like, I'm starting to understand watching this game. It's just uh, because this shrine is so much closer that you can run over and just farm near it. And you have the high ground to work with, too. Like, this area is a lot easier to secure now with all of this area around here to, to work with. The safe lane is now bottom? Yes, precisely. Like, look at all the trees that he's cut. He just feels like he can farm these camps really quickly and safely. Like, you, you have to run up onto that low ground to... to to yeah, get to these this are area. the only entrances here, and as long as they have a ward, it's all fine and dandy. Right, it's just like, when you look at the area, it's just a really nice area to fight around if you're the one on the high ground. I mean, that's every high ground now, but just because the camps are so close together and the shrine is super close. The jungle's also way closer, like, the, where Terrorblade would play if he was playing in the safe lane is on that, like, the tri-camp area uh, closer to the shrine. Right. Which is... Uh, and compare that to this high ground where yeah, you can come I, in from I, right I mean. here and then... Yeah. Like, he would play here before. Right. And that's worse. It's li the, the camps are way less close, and the shrine is Dyer's far away from the lane. Tower is under attack. Well, in a sense, Speed able to take away sentry wards as well as precision. observer wards. And so far, at eight minutes in, uh, looking like it's a slight lead for Ehom, um, but there is a tower taken bottom. As Inkswell. The one downside of running the carry in the off lane is oh, you could just get annihilated. Out with you and your yeah, that's true. There she goes mid. Huh. I guess the DP's not going to pressure very hard. The Shrek just wants to run around and fight. And give space to this lion, too. That's what we were talking about yeah, earlier. Yeah, he's important to have a good game. If he gets level 6, Silar can't sit at low HP. Yeah, he would Although die from, what, full HP right now? If he almost full HP. Silar does have level 6 himself, so could go for that morph and then just impale the lion himself. Yeah. A little dangerous though, because there's that high ground to the left. And is there any radiant vision there? No, it doesn't oh, look like it. Setting up. Oh, he cut through. Hello. And the chase being swell. Oh, but they stampede to get out of there. All right, line living. They're really trying to protect their line. Yeah, they know this is uh, such an important hero in this game. Throws out and pales. Give him the punches. Turns it back around. Silar wants to make the move that we were talking about. The Hex to follow it up. Silar almost yeah. getting the kill, and they will take him down. Oh, that's so funny. They use the Stampede to save him, and then he just walks in and dies in the exact <laughs> way that you described before. <laughs> Although, it, oh my god, four rate bands. Good lord. But uh, it is, it, you know, it's, it's still fine, though, because I think the reason the Stampede was used to save the line is because he was like, okay, guys, I'm going to go down here, and I'm going to farm. You Stampede, like, he probably called it. They might go on him into you Stampede. Like, he knows how important his level 6 is. Now he's level 6 probably going to go for a gank. Oh, they're also going to go for a gank up top here where the Axe having a tough time so far. The Vanguard doesn't help against the magic damage and, well, in return, immediately has to rotate and kill them both off. Oh, that's two cores. You have the DP ulti too to push the tower? And Serpent Wards, potentially? I don't even know if you need to use them. I'm thinking about it. Oh, they're just going to they blow it up. Although the Glyph comes out immediately and now there's a Creep Wave here and there is no Creep Wave for the Radiant, so they're going to take a lot of damage on this DP. She'll heal up as the Exorcism wears off, which is Dude, the those, nice part about those this. Those birds or whatever the hell those are, like, they're so hard to see. Yeah. Look at them. Dyer's I can't. Pay to win. <laughs> <laughs> oh, a great rotation ends up paying off for Aster. Again, a very even game. But we do have that level 6 on the Lion, and he is going to try oh, and get yeah. some Retribution down bottom. Silar has to know this is coming, though. 
especially with he, you know, you just kill the one, and you know he's going to be a little vindictive. Mm. It's like, all right, you know, you wanna you wanna use my own spells on me? Time to get fingered. This th this has got to be a pretty fast reaction by Silar, heading back a little bit more. He's playing this one very safe. The bait is there. I mean, he knows. Centaur does have the blink though, so like all he needs to do is just see the Morphling, and he's gonna die. They're, they're trying. Yeah, and Morphling they're is playing it safe. He's waiting for somebody to show, and he's just out of there. That was a good read. That was a really, really good read. Yeah, that was that was nice. Goes to the mid lane. Has just want to oh, and now they're trying to, to catch though. them. They know that they're down here, and so Aster is gonna try and catch Ehome on the way out, and. Poor old lion, poor old faith beyond. Oh, good blink away. Does he get out? Oh, he can't he, he decide. He's he trying to pre-hex the axe. He's trying to pre-hex the axe. <laughs> he walks into the Phantom's of Race. Oh, my God. That Couldn't he just walk north? <laughs> nah, dude, the axe, was, the axe was waiting for him to just walk away, but... He has Tranquil Boots, though. Dude, that oh, was, wait, no, he doesn't. Never mind. That, that, was, that was like a sick read from both teams, because you could see that the lion was... Uh, Pre-hexing the axe, that's why he was walking back and forth like that. Yeah. He was trying to cast hex, so when the axe blinked, he would immediately get uh, hexed. And then the axe knew that, so he waited for the Grimstroke Silence to be on him before he blinked and did the call. Yeah. That was just like super sick play from both, both teams. This lion is so sad. He just keeps on wanting to point at people, and they're not letting him. Yeah, yeah, he wants that damage. Does he get 50 damage by default if you hover over the... No. Uh, yeah, I don't. Th I don't think so because it'll it'll say it'll yeah. say one. You know, it won't go up to Radiant's two. middle tower one. is under attack. Aster is just playing so well around these movements that they know Ehome want to make. And yeah, they're going down bottom again to take down this Radiant's tower, which tower is so I'll find a dandy. But this is the type of move where you sometimes see other teams that will like send the Terrorblade down here and make them think that there's just one, or make them think that the rest of the teams behind him and then smoke top or something. You know what I mean? Yeah. But they're all there. <laughs> yeah, it's it's tough. You need to like. Radiance bottom yeah. tower. It's a tough one. Fallen. Wards dropped, Dyer's and Aster will be able to take a tier two tower. It looks like they have exorcism available. We'll see if Ehome are going to be able Dyer's to take this tier two. Is under attack. Tier Radiant two. Tier two. I, I, I don't know if you're if you're Ehome if you're okay with this. I'm not, I'm not entirely sure which lineup is better in the late game. Morph versus Terrorblade, I think, Radiance is like bottom tower favoring the Morph. The reason that Terrorblade is sometimes picked into Morph is just because Terrorblade outfarms Morph for the most part, but we can see Morph is, ke is keeping up. Death Prophet is excellent in the late game. I think probably better than Lashrak, especially because they have burst. Uh, has they have like heroes to take down Lashrak. I think the axe is really good against it. Oh, and this smoke, or just movement into Roche, using the Exorcism since they saved it from the last one. Be home. Don't recognize this is happening. Yeah, they're probably too late already. They're just one step ahead, Aster, constantly. Yeah. Every time that Ehome try to make a move, Aster are ready, and then they're making moves of their own on top of that. The way that they're playing around the map, it's like there's not a lot of fighting happening, but you can just see that Aster is not playing into Ehome's hand at all. Yeah. Which is definitely the way to go. You just want to look to take fights only when you... Ooh, this is a good play, though. He has an Aegis, though, and he's sitting at enough HP that I think he doesn't die without anybody else. Yeah. Is he going to try for it? I don't know. It's a, it's a tough... You can sit there and make the calculations, but you can look at the health bars. I, I, th I think, he like, health bar-wise, you're not going to kill the Morphling with that many no. health bars. No, he needs a friend. Yes, Maybe he... with Stampede, the damage from that. Oh, uh, Maybe. That's true. That, that, that always... But it's why you need that like other global presence. It sometimes can be so helpful yeah, with the yeah, heroes yeah. like a Nyx or a Lion or whatever. Yeah, sun, sun Strike or yeah. Zeus Salt, something like that. Zeus would have been amazing this game, but bend out. They bend it out. Yeah. But in the meantime, a little bit of help for Ehome here. They're going to get three bounty runes. Ooh. As Lion's still Daya's just going to chill here waiting for something to happen. This is, is nice, though, because his team is getting into the area to set up Centaurs coming down here. And N nobody's gonna think. Okay, Lion is just sitting in the trees for five minutes straight in the bot lane because you yeah. get bored and go do something else, right? But that's that next play that they need to do. The mind games. Yes, precisely. They did finish the Lincoln's on Morph Lane. That's pretty nice. Now, now it's a lot harder for the Lion. The Morph can get his uh, Morph off, or is it called Attribute Shift now? I don't know. I think it's Attribute Shift. It's yeah. Okay. Yeah, he can get his Attribute Shift. Sorry, his Attribute Shift Strength Gain off. And a good call here. Lion signals that, yes, they're smoking and heading up onto this high ground. So Ehome dodging the smoke, standing on their own high ground. They'll send out a Terrorblade Illusion, try and bait this out, but 
so you can't tell the difference. <laughs> it's, pre it's pretty hard to tell the difference with... Oh, what? That's Silo. Alright, Terrorblade versus Terrorblade. Let's go. You're an axe. Yeah, he's just farming. Oh, he's just... He's just farming. He's jungling. Oh, yeah, you know. Ancient creeps, sure. And Faith Beyond, is he really going to look to take this fight? Taking down illusions, trying to kill off these wards. They want to protect their tower. I don't think you go on this if you're Axe. Like, you have somebody else go in. Maybe the Grimstroke just goes and uses Silence or something. Oh, they can go in with the Terrible Illusions. This is nice. It's so scary walking forward like this because you know all of Aster is right behind it, but you can't give up a tower for free. And yeah, I mean, uh, you know what? You don't even need to go in if you're Aster. Oh, the call. They good. found the Lion in trouble. The Soulbind onto two. Terrible's caught here as well. They're going to try and get the Shackles as well. Catching Sentinel. Our war runner. Can they find any more though? They've already popped the metamorphosis. The egg is also done. Silar took that one down, and Aster ready to just take down the tier two tower and maybe more. They have already used Supernova. I like that Axe is looking for the back line. Once again, same, same story as all these other games. You go on the centaur, you're probably gonna lose that fight. You know that if they're baiting the centaur, they want you to go on him. Oh, so he Silar. just he just goes for like the grim stroke. Or sorry, the uh, the lion. It's such an effective hero to go on. Not gonna, he's not going to be able to bolt the Morphling if he's dead. Phoenix can't get the egg off. Or he did get the egg off, but he dies anyway because he's forced to use the egg. Yeah. Well, and I think that we're seeing why teams are sometimes valuing that Medusa or this Morphling so much. It's feeling like uh, right now Aster are just comfortable sitting back waiting for that late game scenario and Ehome trying to find a way to win. Uh, yeah. And they're not really having luck at doing so. It's, it's kind of cookie cutter Dota and... Uh, that the Aster are gonna win the cookie cutter Dota. Yeah, it's, it's it, when it when the game feel when the game when the game is being allowed to play the cookie cutter Dota and you have better late game. It's always it's always better. This could be a big play though if they can catch Silar here. They do have a sentry. They see that they they should have seen that that war was dropped, right? Yeah. Now. And they have vision of him right they're, here, they're but waiting. yeah. Yeah, they're right pinging the shaman. Like once again, same thing goes for Ehome. You can't just go on the tanky heroes or the Aegis hero. Yeah. If you want to win this fight, you have to kill the supports and then kill. The Morphling, after the Aegis pops a second time when he's alone. There's no other way to win that fight. So if you just see the Morphling, you have to back off. There's no opportunity for you. Especially without Lincolns. He's going to have time to get off the Attribute Shrift. Yeah, he's such a, he's a great target to bait. You don't even need to bait like the Axe. Although, it looks like that's happening. All unintentionally. Right. They're going to try and get the Soulbind out. Now they're connected to both the Hexon and both. What are you doing? Why would you do this? They're still shackled. Too. They're all going down. Eho needs to get the hell out of dodge. And, well, Silar is just going to be able to punch down this egg. Can call him. Oh, no. The lion hasn't been able to use his finger yet. You know, the unfortunate thing about baiting the axe is he dies and has to buy back. But I think Aster is just cool with fighting whatever. And that was that was pretty. The, the Shadow Shaman double hex, double grip with the Grimstroke ulti. That's... That's the sort of stuff that we were hoping to see day day one of this tournament. We were talking about the Grimstroke combos. And, and this is kind of what I was talking about during the drafting stage, too, is that oftentimes when you're playing uh, in these games, I've been seen in the China qualifiers, it's sort of a, a focus on wanting to like play out their particular strategy. But it, it, it feels like you need to be a little bit more innovative when you've got the better late game on Team Master. You need to be pushing the tempo more. Yeah, for sure. I mean, especially when you pick, like, Ola Shrak, who can pressure towers heavily. You go for, you know, these early items on Centaur, Vanguards, and such. Like you could definitely run at some towers early on into the game, but it's it's strange when you pick pick it with this Terror Blade, run at aggro, Don't and they have to play catch up for the rest of the game. Yeah. You know? Shrak, the Sh well, Shrak has definitely felt like a non factor in this game so far, other than his rotations in the Lenny phase. That, that was nice, but. You don't want to just have your mid hero like setting up for good lanes. You want your mid hero to be the one that if the lanes are good, they will snowball and win you the game. Right. Not just your terror blade. A tithe to the impulses. The death prophet has felt effective. Yeah. The axe has felt effective. Lion too. No fingers at all at this point. Like you said. Not a single one. Just walk in, finger creep finger, <laughs> finger axe, I don't know. Do something. <laughs> Gotta do something, that's for sure. Well, they need to make a move, and right now, a Ooh, Shaman This, this would be a great target to go on. This it looks like they're gonna get him. Oh, hit that man. They're not finger, gonna use finger it. Him. 
All right, they give the kill to the terrible illusion. It's probably it, it, it's, it's yeah, probably better. It's the right play. To, to be to be honest. If this is a pub, you finger for sure. Get the extra Radiant gold, get the 50 scatter. damage, but giving the Terra Blade the last hit is absolutely attack. the play. Radiant structures are fortified. Well, it is a tier one tower that's going to start to be assaulted. They're even just letting Faith Beyond tank it. And this feels like the first good thing that's happened Radiant's to Ehome in a very long time. Fall. Yeah. Let's take a look at the win probability. That's a Roche tower too, so that means that the next Roche on the they go for is going to be harder to contest for Aster. Although they do have that shrine there, which is yeah. on that nice little high ground. It's even closer. Yeah. But the tower is still somewhere additional that they can TP if a, if a fight goes on to that location. Or This is cool. The Bloodstone on Leshrac. So the getting the heal that comes out from it yeah. might not be uh, fully expecting that on Team Aster. And I, think this is bait I think this is one of the few heroes that the new Bloodstone benefits a lot uh, Lashrac before the the mana cost on his spells, like you, you could actually, you'd be kind of fine with just regular mana items, you know, Yule Scepter uh, with the with the bottle. But now that the bottle doesn't scale, you kind of need the mana that comes from Bloodstone, and then also the health swing on this hero. Like everybody would go one of two builds on on Lashrac. You'd go Bloodstone, or you'd go just like mega tanky, Hood of Defiance, BKB, walk into fights force the enemy team to use all their spells on you while you're just pulsating for all of this damage. You're just like a suicide bomb, essentially. Yeah. And uh, this allows you to essentially do both. that you, Both of the builds that people would do in the previous patch. And, it, you know, look at him right now. With that 15 strength talent instead of the movement speed, he's sitting at 2,000 HP. He has <laughs> yeah. a Yule Scepter. He has the 60% of current mana switching over into to HP. Yeah, this guy's got quite a bit of effective HP. He needs that armor talent. It's scary against an Axe of Blade Mel and a Morphling with an E-Blade. Yeah, definitely. I think I think Morph will probably still kill you through your Bloodstone if he can get on top of you, but the other heroes, maybe not. All right, maybe some signs of life here for E-Home as they're going to stand on their own high ground and hope to outskill, outfight. They find him right here, though. The taunt, the blade mail. It's just what we were talking about. He is gone so quickly. XXS does die. They get the finger gold with that as well. And now Faith Beyond trying to take down all of these wards as well as they back out and able to run. So blinded to his own illusion. Not the worst thing in the world. Ehome able to bait them up onto the high ground. Silar and the rest of Aster. It's not it's a little scary walking up that high ground. So what would happen if you sunder your own soul blinded illusion? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't, I, I don't think it works for self spells. Doesn't? It's on your illusion. Right, but I don't think that I mean I don't think that it works on uh on like enemies? your allies. Enemies? Yeah, enemies. <laughs> enemy stuff. Because <laughs> otherwise you could like double false promise, right? Oh uh, yeah. Oh that's true. That's true. If you were soul binded. Yeah. Right, what am I thinking? Wait, let's see what it says. Although it has like a positive or like a any negative unit targeted ability that either bound hero receives. Any unit target ability also gets cast on the other hero. Yeah, that's a weird one. I think that this it actually hero. would work then. So it would could Oracle you, against you could, Yeah, yeah. You could double Oracle ulti if you've run into somebody who's soulbound. Huh. Don't worry, I'll save us. Let's test it. Okay. Just exit this game. <laughs> and test it. I'm you know, I'm I'm tentatively feeling like Ehome has a better chance than maybe we're anticipating. I, I'm wondering if this Leshrac is I mean, that last fight didn't look great, um, but if he could get into some tanky items where he doesn't just get blown up. Maybe like up. an Eon Disc yeah. sort of thing, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Terror Blade, definitely always a hero you have to look out for. Like, 1v5-ing, you lose a single fight, he'll take all of your towers instantaneously. So yeah. there's 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 always a chance when you have when you have a Terror Blade. That's the thing. Phantom Lancer, Morphling, Terror Blade, Spectre with these heroes. Dota, uh, Dota Plus is probably going to give you the win probability. Favor, favor. Check it out. Let's see. What's it at? It was. It's. It's even. -ish. That's about even. I mean, even still, with with how I guess I can't see how much map control like Aster has had this game. But speaking of controlling the map, smoking. Ooh, if they could catch them split up, this would be amazing. Even if they do go on the axe, and actually they're going to find instead. Mrs. Oh DP, hello! There's going to be the BKB yes. immediately TPs out of there. Now they're chasing for more. Fenrir is the one that they find, and it could have been great, but she gets out. And it looks like Ehome are going to have to be comfortable with this. And XXS tips the lion. Where's your, where's your hex, bro? God. 
that could have been so good if the de if the death prophet got caught. They didn't have any like wards to place. I think they placed a sentry on the high ground up there. They yeah. didn't place the ward, so they had they just had no vision to scout this death prophet. I I I get it. Like you know, he probably should have hexed or something. But it's like it takes quite a bit of reaction time. When why why even try to outskill when you could just place a ward for that smoke? That that is why a lot of the time people just walk around with a ward. So if a good fight happens, you have it available. I'm not sure if Phoenix just wasn't in the area or something like that. It probably wasn't there. It definitely feels like uh, the tip meta is evolving with Aster. That was... For sure. That was a pretty savage tip. <laughs> yeah, because it's, it's just, you know, indicating, like, that, sh that should have been a kill, and you guys, you screwed up. You in particular. Yes. <laughs> you know, he, he hasn't got... He's got... Oh, he's got one f finger kill. Yeah. One and it was on the axe, if I remember correctly, too. Yes. Oh, that's why I axe tipped him. That was a salty <laughs> tip. I oh, love me some salty tips. Really? Yes. <laughs> All right, oh. 26 <laughs> minutes in, 12 to 10. They're going to push down the bottom lane here. It's only a 1,000 gold lead. Yeah. It's surprising because in all of these games, there is one team that is just has so, so much more map oh. control. Here's where it all comes back together, though. Get this man. Kill him. Make him feel your vengeance. The double edge. Oh, yes. Tip him back. I don't Get think he him. got the damage. I Get him. He didn't steal the damage. He's the bigger map. Yeah. That's good. That's like somebody's flaming in your pub. You just mute them, move on. Yeah. Maybe he didn't even see the tip. Maybe not. Maybe he's got maybe he's got mute, uh, them muted. I know people say that you know when they're playing against VP, they just five man mute all of them because otherwise you're gonna get five man tipped. It's gonna tilt you. Does it show it if you get tipped by somebody when you're muted? I don't think so. I don't think so. I think it doesn't show like chat lines or tips. All right, big moment right here. E home want to take down Roche. There's a regen rune as well. They give it to the Terra Blade as. A scary moment. Axe still dead for seven seconds. They know that Roche is happening and they want to come and contest, but it's so hard without that initiator. Bobica, can you be the hero that everybody needs you to be? The silence is out. The BKB, they have the Sunray healing everybody up while this is going on. They drop the wards as well just in the middle of everybody. Roche. They want to take it down, but he's in trouble. The call comes out in the end. Can he get the Sunder off in time? Yes, indeed he does, but he's still going to fall. They get the cheese though onto him. Still living. It was a snatched ages by virtue of that DP and Jason Ford for more. Lover almost going down. Is he going to die in the duration of this? The long duration stun still catching the Grim Struggle. Look at the damage. They almost kill him off. Apion wants it so badly. Fenrir gets taken down. And Aster somehow, some way, end up taking that fight. I would, oh. I would like to do some, you know, analysis of the team fight and what happened in the fight. But really, the bottom line is. They just did not have enough time to get that Roshan before the Axe respawned. Like, the Death Prophet can just man up, walk in. Terrorblade tried to finish the Roshan, but he didn't do anywhere near enough damage. He just got shredded, and like you said, he got the cheese off, sure, but he just dies afterwards. Like, the Axe, the axe blinks in and just kills him from 60% HP with the Blade Mail on top of the Death Prophet spells, and Death Prophet steals the Aegis because... Everybody's so distracted by what's going on in the pit that he just walks in with the BKB, stealing health from everybody, no chance of dying, picks up the Aegis quite easily. That honestly was just, don't don't run into Roche with Axe about about, about to respawn. At least like if, if you're on this team and you're looking at this replay after, yeah. win, win or lose, it's just like, okay, we that, that was just close to a good call, but we just made the wrong calculation, basically. Well, and at the end of the day, they did get the kill under Roche. They bought themselves some more time, and it was a buyback from Shadow Shaman. So it, I guess the thought is it could have gone so much worse. Yeah, like, for sure. For if sure. That, if Terrible doesn't get the cheese, he dies, and you probably don't get any other kills. Right, right. It took massive outplays by e -home to make that work for them. Yeah, and I mean, I mean even, even if, like, the Axe gets a dunk off sooner, or if he gets, like, one extra spin, maybe Death Prophet gets off a Crypt Swarm, Terrible got the Sunder off and then the cheese. So he had two chances to just get obliterated in that fight. Right. 30 minute mark. What did the bounty runes look like? It looks like uh, it is E home pretty much across the board. They got three. Yeah, they got three. Of them. And still after that huge fight, we're dead even. Dead 30 even. minutes, 15 to 14, thousand gold lead. Yeah, it's stalemate central. And, uh, <laughs> despite, usually it's those like crazy team fights that we see it go one one way or the other. Yeah. 
Hmm, why? I'm, I'm wondering what, what are they doing with this axe right here? Are they baiting him? Is that what this is? What does the axe have? Are, are they letting him farm? Up? Oh, they're BKB. getting they're getting him as BKB, and then they're gonna go smoke with this BKB. Yeah, there it is. Oh, that's actually a Phoenix. They probably still have a smoke, I'm sure. This costs uh, a little bit more. I do calculations, please. Yeah, I'll get it. I'll get it. The DP even silenced the uh, the creeps to try to help the axe farm a little mm. bit quicker. Uh, they had to use the bloodstone by the uh, Leshrac too in that fight. How many charges do you lose per death now? Three, is it? Yeah, three. Okay. So yeah, that's that's quite a bit better than it was before. And they have the BKB as well as the Scotty done on Terrorblade. He is becoming a stronger and stronger hero. Yeah. Terrorblade is looking pretty scary. Although you do have the morph to counter, but... And the levels-wise, they're still in the lead. Uh, Leshrac Radiant got his 20, Austin. which is the Pulse Nova damage. Oh, man. Super good against... A lot of these heroes who are going to run in and just get shredded by that. Uh, Siler is not with the rest of his team right now. He's got to be careful to back away. All right, yeah, I think Ehome realizes what's going on. Faith Beyond needs to get the hell out of here. Ooh, they spotted the centaur. Yeah, he blinks away. He might force staff. Yeah, he's, he's just getting out. So they dodged the uh, smoke gank. Again, heads up play by Ehome to get yeah, they, themselves they're, out. They're really, really good at calling these smoke plays. I, I don't know who it is that's making these calls, but... They, they need a commend after this game because so many times we would see other teams just get destroyed by these smokes. Yeah. Like, you, you you get caught up by that smoke, you lose a tier two, maybe your axe. Well, they do also have the Centaur, Aghanim Scepter, that's going to be soon on the way. Oh, yeah, yeah. Getting that 40% damage reduction. That's super huge for the, uh, for the axe call. You just completely counter the blade mail, though. They do have a Yule Scepter on the Lashrak for that as well, but just to negate negate some of that damage that's going to come out during the limited lockdown that Aster had between the Shadow Shaman and the Axe. Well, and like the Yules on the, the Lashrak is no longer as effective either, so they need another answer for the Axe call. True, and also if he can use that to save himself, it's probably better yeah. if he can use that as like a defensive thing in a fight and just keep getting that pulse damage out. Definitely. Uh, the Shiva's Guard done for the Death Prophet. Looks like Octarine Core is going to be the next call, as we've seen oftentimes this DP. Haven't seen uh, that much of her recently in uh, in Dota, but I do feel like it's probably going to be less good than it was before just because of the armor changes for Death Prophet. What is? Oh, the, uh, the, ulti. the ulti? Yeah, for sure. The le You know, we a lot of things have the same armor and take uh, the same amount of damage reduction. Oh. Physical damage. Dyer's XXS, standing up on attack. high ground. They send in the Terra Blade. They see him now. So full Dyer's understanding of what's going on. Siler takes this moment to switch on over and become a Terra Blade for a moment. Lion wrapping around on the other side. They need some vision here, though. And I believe that this was scouted They're out by Aster. Jump in, able to get the call immediately. But look at him, interrupted. He's just dead. And just like that, Aster needing to get away and... Looks like they will be able to, but Ehome take that fight very quickly. They Axe is just melting in these fights. They didn't use Metamorphosis, though. So did Morphling. <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> Look out. Yeah. Only the 11 armor right now. has definitely been... Uh, didn't get the DKB off either. Right. Going for a Yule Scepter on Axe. Hmm. Huh. I guess just so he can blink in, disable, Yules, Yules himself after the BKB? I don't know. Um, what else he, would it be? He, who's he Yulesing? Who's he trying to Yules? Yules the little Shrek, he's just gonna keep Bounty. doing damage. I don't think Yulesing the Lion does anything, or the Centaur. Dyer, yeah, I don't know, that's a weird, uh, weird one. Radiant's middle tower is under attack. I mean, maybe. he has the mana regen talent, so it's not something maybe like that. Maybe he'll swap it for something else. Yeah. Probably Regardless, just, probably just deciding what item he wants to go. Yeah. Let's see that Lesh is pushing out here, and after a little bit of a rough early game, it does feel like Aster are on the comeback. And you know, I, I didn't really believe in this Lesh rack pick going into the late game, but the more that I'm seeing it, the more I'm feeling like maybe this is going to end up working out for him. Yeah, he's actually he's actually being effective in these fights now. Now that he's actually surviving, right? Uh, with the with the BKB with the Yules and the Blink, he's able to actually get into the fights and do a lot of pulse nova damage. I think. 
a large majority of the damage that was on the axe in that last fight was the Lashrak. I know Terrorblade does a lot of damage too, but I think I, like the Lashrak just looked like he was doing a lot of damage as well with that Pulse Nova. And the other thing about this hero is that before, when you started to die a couple of times, it was that like negative snowball that would happen because you don't have the Bloodstone charges anymore. True, yeah. Now you just have that passive regen that's going to double it naturally. Yeah. So Radiant it's still a good item even if you die a bunch. Yeah. He can bait, which he has done in a lot of these fights. All right, Lion sees the Morphling. Maybe a call to make a movement out across the map, but I think that they're going to be too slow as all of Aster is going to back out yet again. And it looks like, yeah, they're just going to farm regularly, take back map control of this side of the map. Let's take a look at the vision here. Right now, Radiant, pretty good wards down. Damn, Aster's, Aster's backing off from that vision. That is yeah. That is good vision, and they're, they're still playing so disciplined, but completely God. backing off. Every time it makes sense. They need to fix that. It's been like that for a little while. I don't hear people complain about that one a lot. Do you? Yeah. Oh, okay. Grant, Grant complains about that. Grant complains about that. I love sleeping. Um, <laughs> I love him. He did play Radiant's Jigglypuff against me today. Freaking Smash Bros. So That's pretty obnoxious. That's unbelievable. I would not appreciate that. I didn't. Yo, look at this Terrorblade's items. Daedalus. Daedalus. One of the best damage items in the late game on any hero. Very few items that you can build that have the gold per damage efficiency that Daedalus has. We do also have Sylar, who's a couple levels ahead of him, but it's going to be that level 20 talent for Terrorblade, which I'm assuming is going to be the reflection cooldown. Um, maybe yeah. not. I don't know. Probably. What is it, like 10 all stats, the other one? Yeah. Ten uh, that's. Uh, I mean, you're not digging it. Uh, it's too, it's a it's too little. It's too little. P permanent reflection is pretty, pretty insane. I mean, I'm just thinking about the heroes that you have in this game. Like Axe, it breaks his blink dagger. That's cool. Morphling is the main one. Yeah, it's pretty much morph. I like Death Prophet certainly doesn't care. No, she doesn't. Care. Trust me, oh. I know how to handle such power. If there was ever a game to take the ten stats, it would be this game. Yeah, that's true. I could see it. That might not mean it's still good. <laughs> it still might not be good. <laughs> All right, send in the TB Illusion. See that Roche is there. He's going to get the deny on it. Oh, nice. Siler's so mad about that. He might not be mad about this, though. Moving into the pit. The Illusion is going to spot them out. Pops Metamorphosis. Starting to deal out the damage in a second. Here, he'll stop immediately. Counter Initiation coming out, though. And now the real... Terror Blade is in front of everybody wanting to kill them all off. It's the silence that Yule Scepter interrupted, though, and now Leshrac no standing damage. tall with this BKB. Is he going to be able to do enough? They have a Sunder available. No, but it catches him out with the Adaptive Strike buyback immediately coming, but they do have the Supernova down. Now isolated away from the rest of his team. Leshrac under control and going to fall. He has buyback, but it's looking like this Roche is going the way of Team Aster as Yule Scepter lift up. Can they kill off this Phoenix as well? The taunt is there. He's caught and likely going to be killed yet again. Triple kill for Silar. This man is a monster. Damn. Good good call to go for Roche, I guess. I mean, what what was... Ha I didn't quite see, but, like, the Terror Blade, he went in, and it just looked like he was doing absolutely no damage. I think with the, sh with the Shiva's Guard on top of the fact that I believe he was hitting the Axe who, w who used the taunt, yeah, and then all the all the BKBs meant that there was nobody on eHome that was actually disabling these heroes. So Terrible just walked in and got to completely kited, did no damage, and then his BKB wore out, and he just melts to the Morphling. I mean, it definitely felt like a lot of eHome were not all on the same page. It was like a panic move to run in there and make it happen at the last second. And unfortunately, now, with everybody Dyer's still a little ways away, they have not bought back, and it looks like they're going to have to give up at least a Rax, if not Dyer's more. Well, they've, no, they've no metamorphosis to work with, so their blade is, is, is not really a hero. Death Prophet Ultimate use. Yes, indeedy. They are going to head up towards the north. 8,000 gold lead already, looking to build upon that, and... Ehome need a way to hold off on their buildings. Creating some of those reflection illusions, throwing it back the other way. Already they've got the Serpent Wards out again. And guess what? Once you're all done with this exorcism, they're going to have another round of it if they want to use it. Crimson Guard doing the best that it can, but 
These buildings will fall. Two racks, initiation coming out. They want to try to come take him down at the beginning, but there's going to be the taunt catching them both. The Soulbind is there as well. The Supernova not going to do enough here. I don't believe, although they're trying to kill him down again. Again, the Hex is there. Faith Beyond gone. And Ehom again have to lick their wounds and back up. Their barracks are gone. The, the center, the center went in because the the back line was revealing themselves, and he thought that that was basically the best opportunity for them to, to take a fight. It, it, it all goes back to that last fight. It's just this fact that they do not have this metamorphosis to work with. They're fighting into the three items that come from Roche: Aegis, Cheese, and Refresher Shard. And they're going to find another initiation coming out immediately. Hexton caught and Elestrak. Yule Scepter is he going to be killed? Yes, indeed. Goes down, buys back into the game. They hex up this Terra Blade. He needs to get off of Sunder. He can do it, but no, it is not going to happen. Dead for 90 seconds, and GG. Team Aster, the second team, going to the Chongqing Major. And Ehome going to have to battle with LGD for the final spot. Wow. Um, and that, that, that one fight around Roche, it's like the, 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 whole, the whole game is completely even until we hit some sort of Roche fight. One team buys back on every hero. They, they kind of like overcommit to this idea that they need to fight the Roche, which I get it. They, yeah. they probably did have to do that. But then you have this complete snowball effect. Like the Phoenix gets picked off because he's just trying to sit around the Roche pit and just get something done. Uh, and then you have somebody getting picked off after that. Like it's just this massive snowball effect as a result of this understanding that the third Roche is... There's no way to fight into those three items, especially if right. you have a Death Prophet on your team. So you, you know that you need to fight into that, but... Really, that one fight where the Terrorblade was just doing no damage. Like he, yeah. he hard committed. He was he, he was in there with BKB. He was allowed to hit anybody he wanted to, and he was just doing no damage. I mean, that's really the the problem too. When you look at this game, as we've talked about it before, getting into the late game, it, it seems to be a good strat. You just sort of delay the game, delay the game, delay the game, farm up your core items, and then go in and fight around a rush pit. And uh, if you have the better team, then you're gonna win it. Yeah, the Morphling is just. Very good against the Terrible. <laughs> yeah. Basically, does everything that Terrible does, except also has the, as the the element of like the magic burst. Mm -hmm. We saw when the Terrible's BKB wore off in that last fight, and a lot of the engagements, Morphling would just crush him with the magic burst damage that he had between the Ethereal Blade and the Adaptive Strike, uh, and then also Morphling just before that. While the Terrible was BKB, he was just metamorphed himself, right. doing damage to the Terrible's team. So yeah. it's it's just it's just quite a good. Uh, Quite a good hero. And uh, Aster is now Team Aster. They are in the major. All right. And uh, I have a little tribute. Oh. For Team Aster. I got a cup oh, of tea Oh, really? Here. Pay a little bit of a tribute to Team Aster. I'm going to pour out one for, what for, are the, you doing? for the boys. <laughs> what are you doing? What are you uh, doing? Uh, <laughs> what the oh. fuck are you doing? <laughs> oh, yeah. Pour one out for the boys. All right. For, for the boys on Team Aster. Um, well, that, I... I got it all over my shoes. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus <laughs> this did not work as planned. <laughs> all right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to clean up Jenkins. We'll be back a little bit with our final match. It's going to be Eho <laughs> facing off against LGD. See you guys in a bit. Get a towel or something. What are you doing? Go, go ahead.